What's happening, musician friends? Matt Vanacoro here again with my pals at Gig Performer. And today I'm gonna dive into the idea of using Gig Performer in a live situation for a musical. So if you are a theater person, you play different songs, you accompany, you play live shows, and you work in the theater industry, well, this video is gonna help you learn about how to use a live host to get all those sounds in a row. Now, you'll definitely wanna like and subscribe to kind of jump into some of our other content and look at how you can really tweak this out. I'm gonna start from the ground up, but we've got some great videos that really dive into, you know, MIDI assignments and assigning different sounds to different buttons and things on the keyboard. But I'm just going to kind of jump into the best practices for setting up gig performer in a theater situation. Let's take a look at the rack space first. So you look at this rack space, it's like the complete polar opposite of what I do uh, when I'm going for just a live touring situation with a rock band or something. This is a minimalist setup. You'll see piano just has the word piano up there and piano and strings and plucked synth. I actually don't put a lot of controls on there to adjust volume and things like that for these sounds. Now, if you look backstage at the wiring a little, you can see that I can, of course, go in and adjust the level for all the different individual instruments if I want to. But when I'm playing in a live situation for theater, the show gets frozen, right? Uh, it gets, you know, kind of frozen in time in the way that it is. And I don't want to, I'm not going to adjust the strings, you know, one night and decide that I need a little bit more string patch or a little bit less. And I certainly, if I'm programming this show for someone else to play, another keyboard player, I, I don't want them to accidentally adjust the balance either of something that we have spent hours and days and weeks fine tuning. So I don't put a lot of that stuff on the front panel. What I want on my front panel is loud and proud at any time the keyboard player can look over or the guitarist, whoever's using the live hosting software, they can look over and just see what sound they're currently on. So that's one of the things that I've got set up right away is that I've got a couple sounds here, piano, piano and strings, a plucked synth, um, but all of them pretty much just say the name of the patch. I do all of the editing backstage and behind it and I do that that is by design because I don't want someone if I got a sub last thing I want if a sub comes in on a you know Wednesday show is for them to start messing with the volumes and changing things on uh, the on the you know the, the library I want everything the way I left it so that's number one now with that in mind uh, you're going to dive through using uh, the different rack spaces in a slightly different way than you might in a live show. So if I go uh, into the set list, you're going to really want to get to know set lists and how they can help you page through and kind of jump through your different songs in a musical. All right, so a lot of these different musicals, the songs have multiple sounds now, right? You're a keyboard player, you're opening the book, and there's going to be eight or nine different sounds in a row that you might use for a song. So you're thinking of the show is the highest level, right? So I load up my gig file, that's the show. And then the individual songs is the next level in the hierarchy, and that song might contain parts, and the parts are what's going to correlate to the different rack spaces, the different sounds that I need. So if you look right here, I've got a song titled, uh, let's just go back to song number two, all right? So I'm playing a musical, song number two, it's called I Don't Need You. It's using just the piano sound. Okay, but if you look here, uh, I've got a piano starting at measure one. So I titled the part, I actually titled the part measure one piano. So that uh, also if I'm in a rehearsal and I need to, you know, the conductor calls out a measure and they go measure 76, I know what sound I need to be at based on the measure numbers in the part. That has saved me a lot of time from, you know, trying to go back a few pages and go, okay, when's the last patch change I did? Oh, geez, it was 18 measures ago. It was two pages ago. I don't have to worry about that. I just number the measures inside of the part. So now if I go to the second song here, 2A, I don't need you any more reprise. I'm sure there uh, there might be a, a musical, you know, with those names. Who knows? So now that's got two different sounds. And you'll see if you take a look, I've got measure one, the piano and strings. All right. And then somewhere around measure 23, there's a little solo part where it's just piano. So I've got those two right there, measure one and measure 23. So the parts correlate to the different sounds. So you can assign these rack spaces to anything you want. So let's say instead of piano at measure 23, it was supposed to go to the plucked synthesizer. When I click on that part of the song, here's all my rack spaces down in the bottom. So I'll just switch it to plucked synth. 
Okay, and there you go. And it's just that easy. You know, you just click and pick the different rack space. So one of the things you're probably seeing is that now, instead of just creating um, a million different setups, you know, a lot of shows, when I'm playing shows, sometimes they only use eight or nine different sounds, you know? So I don't need to recreate every single one. I can make all my different setups and then go ahead and use them. So when I, uh, if I decide that this sound right here should be just piano, I just click on piano. I don't have to make a new piano rack space. I can just use the piano rack space I have. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you can, you know, if you've got a piano with a different split, you can go in and do it. But this just saves you a ton of time and resources, right? You're not loading up a million different rack spaces that you don't need that are duplicates of each other. So that's something that makes it really cool and really easy. Now, what about switching between these parts? That's one of the great things about Gig Performer is that the MIDI is so customizable and it's so easy to do. You've got lots of different ways that you can, you know, assign MIDI to change from one part of the song to the next or from one song to the next. You can actually change both. So if I go to options up here and I change to the set list song page, now I've got the ability here to go from next song to previous song. So if I want to skip songs, I can assign buttons on my MIDI controller or notes or whatever, or next song part and previous song part. So I'm going to go ahead and just do next song part. Now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to duplicate the setup for the keyboard patch solution. Sometimes these shows, uh, they have like a beginner's uh, little keyboard patches that you can buy with the show. You know, they sound good. They're nice. They're not always as nice as you using your own, you know, software instruments that are going to sound fantastic. All these great sample libraries you can have. But sometimes, you know, these keyboard players that you might hire to play your show, they might be used to that. They are used to using certain keys on the keyboard to change sounds. And that's the great thing about, you know, gig performers that it's so customizable. So I can just go here, next song part. All right. I'll just hit learn the MIDI and I'll hit the highest note on my keyboard. So that's the next song part. Then I'll go to previous song part, and I'll hit the second highest note on my keyboard. All right, now they're learned. I'll click on the Learn MIDI and turn that off, and look at that. If I hit those keys, it jumps through. See that? So I'm going from there to there. And you'll notice it's not playing the note. So that note on the top now, it's not going to play the note and jump through. There's some other software that'll do that. Like if you assign it to a key, it actually plays the note. You have to jump in and mute those keys and it can be a real hassle but gig performer automatically does that now you've got the option to only allow it just for your own safety only allow it to jump through parts in the song and not exit the song so you don't exit it by accident and that's in the options menu as well so if i go to the songs right there i can actually check off next previous part uh next previous song part stays within the song or I can have it so that it just goes. I like it to go just, you know, no matter what, go to the next thing. Uh, and the great thing is that you can use keys on the keyboard or you can go ahead and assign buttons on a MIDI controller. So I've got this Arteria Key Lab over here. I can hit the buttons over here and get that to change sounds for me if I want. So, uh, you know, it's really, really a great thing. It's, it's awesome. It's the ability to just use anything as your next sound, previous sound button. I even know some people that use like you know, customize arcade buttons from arcade video games that uh, go out and they are, you know, they're assigned to MIDI and you can use those if you want. So really, really cool. All right. So we've got that set up. Now let's talk about something else. And that is, you know, the, the job of sound effects. Sometimes uh, as a keyboard player, as a music director for a show, sound effects are starting to more and more get thrown on our backs to trigger. You know, you're triggering something maybe in you know Ableton Live, a loop or something, or you're triggering something else. And I'm starting to have to do that a lot more. Well, Geek Performer's got you covered there as well. So if I go to the wiring page, let's go to this sound effect setup that I've got. So the first thing that I want to do when I'm doing that is I want to really be specific about what's triggering the sound effects. Could I map it to buttons or things on this MIDI controller? Yeah, I could. Uh, what I like to do, though, is I do like to have a totally separate um, smaller keyboard or a pad, a bank of pads. Oh, I love a good bank of pads. It's the little things, right? You know, a bank of pads on the side that I can tap and I know that I'm not going to mess with my keyboard for music playing. I just, that little divide in my brain helps me sometimes. So I like to have it separated. So you'll see right here, instead of a MIDI Omni in, this block, I've set it up to only get MIDI from my Arturia Mini Lab MK2. And that helps me sleep at night. It makes me go, okay, I'm definitely not going to accidentally trigger a sound effect from my keyboard. I've got to literally reach over here physically to this keyboard in order to do it. Okay, now you might have just heard, no, that wasn't my phone going off. 
that's the the sound. I'm doing a sound effects for you know someone texting in a musical. And so what I've done is I've assigned one of the buttons on this Arturia Key Lab to a sound effect. And I use the audio file player inside of Gig Performer. And if you look at the panel, I set up a button that just plays it when I tap it. Okay, there it goes. So if I wanted a second sound, I can go back to the wiring and I'll just pop in another one, all right? So I'll go ahead and I'll just drop down to media players, audio file player, okay? I can drag and drop audio files. So you see I drag that wave file and just drop it. It's a one-shot sample and there we go. So now it's receiving a text sound, all right? And from here, I can rename it so I can find it later on. So I'm just going to rename it and we'll call it SFX for sound effects. Receive text. Okay, so that's my receiving text sound. I'll connect the MIDI to it. I'll connect it to my audio interface. All right, there we go. Now all I need to do is assign a button or a MIDI note to, to play that one. So what I'll do is I'll go to the panel and edit it. I'm going to assign a pad. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a drum pad and drag it in there. So I'll grab this red drum pad drag it in there okay i'll select these suckers right there and let's just go ahead and align the top of them so that they're lined up cool so now i grab this guy and i go to the plugin mapping and we'll map that to oh there it is sound effects receive text and i'll play that sound from the beginning now i just need to assign it to a button on this midi controller and that is easy i go to midi under the widget properties and i hit learn and check this out i just tap the button there you go now i hit learn again i'm all done so there's the receive text, there's the send text. So now I'm able to cue my own sound effects from a physically separate MIDI controller. Now, could I make those buttons, you know, a button on this MIDI controller? Absolutely, easy enough, you know. When I'm going to the MIDI, uh, if I just, you know, learn and then tap a key on my keyboard, I could do a key on my keyboard if I hit learn, tap a key, and there it goes. And I can go on and off, on or off, that kind of thing. Um, I can learn buttons on this keyboard, but I really love for myself, best, again, we're just talking about best practices and what I like to do. I like to have the sound effects physically on a separate keyboard. Uh, or again, just buying a bank of pads. You can't go wrong. Just buy yourself a nice bank, uh, you know, USB MIDI controller with eight pads on it. Put it right to the side. There's your sound effects for the whole musical. Now, the last thing, this is, the, this is like a little crazy. This is maybe over the top, but I really love it. Let's say you don't want to queue up the sound effects as a separate queue. You know, I don't want to put it in between songs. I want access to those sound effects 24 seven when my keyboard is turned on. For those of you that are that advanced and you have to have it, you can move that stuff into the global rack space. So I can take these three things. I'm going to go to the wiring, the setup. I'm taking the setup right there and I'm copying it. All right. And now what I'm going to do is go to the global rack space and I'm gonna paste it in there, and there it is, okay? So now I'll connect it to the outputs of my audio interface, and now what I'm gonna do is go to the panels and do the same thing on the panels, all right? So what I'll do is I'll get out of the global rack space, here we go, I'll edit these, I'll take these two pads really quick, all right? And then I'll go to the global rack space panel, let's edit it, I'll paste it in, there we go. Now, I'll quickly assign them, all right, so that first one, we're going to go to sound effects. Let's do the first one is receiving a text. And then the second one, sound effects, sending a text. All right, and of course, I do want to assign the MIDI. Oh, I've already got it, I think. There we go. All right, let's just assign the MIDI. Oh, we reassigned that one. I forgot. There we go. That one's there. That one's there. All right, so now they're all assigned. So now the ultimate test, right? Let's see, I'll go on the piano sound. I'm back to piano, but if I hit this, my sound effects are still there. So my little sound effects machine is running in the background the whole time, no matter what sound I'm on. I can trigger those sound effects and use them if I put them in the global rack space side. Now we've got a separate video just talking about the global rack space you can jump into if you want to. Again, that's a little high level, but you know, I wanted to take you from the beginning best practice of simply using text labels and keeping your interface as clean as possible 
all the way to the middle where we're looking at those set lists and setting up parts and labeling them with measures so you know what measures correspond to your patch changes. And then the highest level to putting some stuff in the global rack space if you want access to it no matter where you are in the show. So a lot of possibilities for those of you that love musical theater and love gig performer. So get at it.